50 cent. Finally. So this morning, I, as you guys know, all these albums I got to listen to still. This morning, I tell my wife, oh yeah, I'm going to listen to 50 cent. You know what she said to me? You haven't listened to 50 cent yet? <laughs> oh, sh- oh, oh shit. Oh shit. Even my wife, even my wife has gotten into the whole, you haven't listened to blah, blah, blah yet? And it's like, yeah, sorry. <laughs> I thought that was pretty funny. I figured you guys would find that entertaining as well, that I'm even in my own goddamn r- living room, I'm being called out by my family members. <laughs> Finally getting to get rich or die trying. 50 Cent, I'm looking at some of these streaming numbers. This is like a massive album. That is 20 years old. That's right. 2003 was 20 years ago. So if you remember this album coming out or you remember buying it on CD or anything like that, that was 20 years ago. And I love, I love pointing that out because I can just drag all you fuckers with me when it comes to getting old. Mm -hmm. You're all coming with me. Um, in terms of this album, so there are seven music videos that will be Patreon only. I'll do that at the end. One of the videos is the remix of, uh, shit. I don't remember which one. It's got Snoop Dogg. Uh, so I'm, I'm doing the album that has 19 tracks. I guess the original ends on track 16, which is got to make it to heaven. And then this, this one has Wankster, You Not Like Me and Life's on the Line. Um, the remix song I'll do with the, the, I'll just listen to that when I do the music video. And then what else was I going to say? I don't remember. Oh, you know, in terms of Patreons, $2 a month, no ads. There's no ads. YouTube is getting awful. They're trying to get rid of everybody's ad blockers. You got to watch ads. got to watch ads. All my videos with music get claimed. I can't control ads. They claim them and then fill them up with ads. So if you want to enjoy this without ads, Patreon, two bucks a month, over 100 albums. It's all in the description, so on. Now, regarding 50 Cent, I've probably heard some of this, right? Like, I have to have heard some of this somehow. Like, how the fuck? In the Club's got almost 1.3 billion streams. It was a massive song. Um, I'm, so I'm expecting to recognize some stuff. <clears throat> Got a couple little write-ups on Discord this morning for people saying, yeah, you know, I guess he was dealing drugs at the age of 11. He got shot up real bad. That's when he kind of started doing the the mixtapes and shit like that. Eminem found him, signed him. Boom. There you go. Very quick, dirty, uh, surface-level knowledge of 50 Cent. Um, And I guess I don't really know what else to say, so we'll just get rolling. Kind of a longer album, plus with the music videos, it'll be a bit of a longer video. But it was I was kind of going through getting set up, like lots of production uh, or some production in here by Dr. Dre, so that'll be fun. Getting some West Coast sound again, and um, yeah. So the first track is intro, which is super short, six seconds, and then drops into "What Up, Gangsta." So we'll just roll from one to two, and um, yeah, man, finally listening to Fifty Cent. Finally, I'm looking forward to it. I, I'm aware of his vocals. You know, I have heard him before and he's got good, strong sound in his voice. You know, just, just a nice vocal sound. Anyway, let's get rolling. First time hearing Get Rich or Die Trying. Gonna let it roll through the intro. And off we go. Oh, shit. Okay. Trippy. <laughs> you feel like kind of pulled back in time a little bit. <laughs> this is not familiar to me. I don't know this one. In the vest on my chest, I try not to say nothing to DA. My warm playing court, but I want to duck nigga down like this is sport. Put on me, I'll cut your gun, but you'll fuck you. You're getting money, I can't get nothing with you, then fuck you. I'm cool not change there in production. For DWI, I'm the type that can you connect when the coke price buys. Gangsters, they bump my shit, then they know me. I grew up around some niggas, just not my homies. The production's different. Very different. 
da ist er fleißig. What, what up, blood? What, what up, gangster? Good voice flow. I like just good sound here in the voice. I like this. G unit. I remember that being in like a Chappelle skit or something. Okay. I mean, this is cool. Good starter for the album, for sure. Good strong track to start the album. Uh, cool. Just a neat little sound added in at the end there. A violin, maybe? I think so. Okay. Okay. And you know, it looks like it just drops right into track three. I'll pause real quick, you know. <clears throat> I always got to settle in. It always takes me a little while to settle in. So this is different. Last week I did Barter 6. Great production, but very minimal in like almost an ambient experience. And then on the other, I did another album last week, Ken Carson's A Great Chaos. Very different as well. <clears throat> it does sound... I, I want to say it sounds like early 2000s, but that's only because I know of when it came out. But really, I haven't, I don't think I've listened to a lot of stuff from the early 2000s. So I think that's kind of registering in my mind right now. But I have to imagine, anybody who knows this album so well has been listening to it for two decades. Like that first, you know, the first track, even though I'm not going to sit here and say it's the best thing I've ever heard. It's cool. It's a good, solid, strong opener. It's got to just be like, oh, here we go. You know, like this is that album. It starts with What Up Gangster and then you just keep rolling into it. So let's keep rolling into it, which is track three, Patiently Waiting, featuring Eminem, produced by Eminem. Here we go. Let's drop in. And I'll give What Up Gangster a heart. That's a good, strong opener. Good, strong opener. Do I have anything to say about lyrics? I have to remember, last week I did two albums where I wasn't paying any attention to lyrics. <laughs> I was like, oh shit, that's right, that's right, lyric exists on this one. You know, I was noticing his flow, okay, you know, it's not like he's, you know, rapid spitfire or anything like that. He just kind of goes through his thing. Rhymes are pretty straightforward, okay, okay. You know, it wasn't really anything that like super caught me or blew me away or, or whatever. He's, he's doing his thing. So, no strong opinions really. And I don't want to have a strong opinion one way or the other because probably the first time I've heard a 50 Cent song from song top to bottom, you know? So we'll just let this be what it is. We'll, we'll see what he says in track three. Patiently Waiting, produced by and featuring Eminem. Here we go. Hey, M, you know you're my favorite white boy. Oh, and the roll from I, Gangster I, I, to this one. That's a good... I've been patiently waiting for a track to explode on yeah. This is cool. Uh huh. This is cool. Destination heaven. Sit in politics with passengers from 9 11. The Lord's blessings leave me lyrically inclined. Shit, I ain't even got to try to shine. God's the seamstress that tailor fitted my pain. I got scriptures in my brain. I can spit at your dame straight out the good book. Look, niggas is shook. 50 fit no man warrior. Sweet swords like Conan. Ah, okay, I'm like it then. This is cool. When the source of quote it, when I die, they'll read this and say a thing is wrote it. Cool. This is great sound. This is great. Yeah, this is a great sound right here. It just feels like you're on the hunt, you know? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Like an angel came to you safe from the heavens above. They think they're crazy, but they ain't crazy. Let's face it, shit, basically, they just playing sick things. Shit, they ain't saying shit, spraying 50. A to the K, get in the way, I'll bring Dre and them with me and turn this day into fucking mayhem. You stay with me? <laughs> Don't let me lose you. I'm not trying to confuse you when I let loose with this Uzi and just shoot through your Isuzu. Shit, what you know about death threats? Cause I get a lot. Shady records was 80 seconds away from the time with some cowards. Yeah. <laughs> 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 <
your showers There's nothing spookier You're now about to witness the power of fucking This is fucking This is like I, I have to remember, you know, this is his debut album. It's so little intro with the coin spinning and loading the gun and then wake, you know, what up gangster? Cool, solid, strong intro. And then you roll into this. Oh, fuck. Like I could already feel kind of that experience. I mean, this is, this is what's fun. This is my first time hearing it. And so I, I'm kind of like trying to go back, right, to people putting the city in their car. And being like, yeah, okay. And then like, oh, fuck, <laughs> this is good. This is good, you know? And then, you know, the track listing, many men I've heard before, In the Club is a massive fucking talk. So this this first four tracks, just debut album, and it's just a fucking avalanche of fire. That sounds like a bad day. It's an avalanche, but it's also on fire. <laughs> Jesus. This is cool. Now, the cowards that hit the building, is he talking about 9-11? Is this... Uh, in 2002, his rumored Al Qaeda sent Eminem death threats after he dressed up as Osama bin Laden in the music video for Without Me. <laughs> That's funny. I had no idea that happened. That's funny. I want to get into, I want to touch on a little bit of 50 Cent here, his lyrics. I'm innocent in my head, like a baby born dead. That right there. That right there was like, you know, it, it, if you kind of just blow through it, you go, oh, yeah, okay. But man, that, I, you know, thinking about, you know, he said earlier, you know, or he said in here somewhere, you know, was, was it the previous song already? I'm already getting my songs mixed up about, you know, I, I grew up, I didn't, my, my, I didn't grew up without a father. Should that make me bitter? So he doesn't have his dad. He's selling drugs at 11. And you get this line, I'm innocent in my head like a baby born dead. He's born, obviously, he's alive, obviously, but like just having this idea of your life where you, you're already dead, you don't even have a chance, that kind of thing, you know? And so if that's the case, if that's your view on it all, and then you have to do whatever to try and survive, it's kind of like, it's not my fault in a way. I'm innocent. It's not my fault. It's the circumstances that I was dropped into. Hmm. Hmm. God's a seamstress that tailor fitted my pain. I got scriptures in my brain. I could spit at your dame. Huh. Huh. Gr oh, it was this song. Grew up without my pops. Should that make me bitter? I caught cases. I copped out. Does that make me a quitter? Yeah, cool. Cool. And then, you know, hearing Eminem too. And it's, I don't know a lot about Eminem's more recent stuff. You know, his early stuff I've listened to. I'm aware of it. I own the CDs. So that's why I haven't done any reaction videos to that. But, you know, a lot of people have said now he sucks and he's fallen off. And what is it? I've learned a little bit about lyrical miracle and how it's all about just going as fast as possible. And a lot of people don't seem to like that. Um, anyway, whatever. I mean, this is a pretty good fucking, it's like, it's just kind of like a good, solid, standard Eminem verse from his early career. You know, I've always liked his rhyming schemes and it seems like his wordplay, there's a lot more... Uh, <laughs> God, this is great. I can't remember the word that is used to describe having lots of words. Vocabulary. <laughs> That's great. Forgot the word vocabulary. <clears throat> He's always had a great vocabulary. Okay, let's keep going. This is, I'm just, this is cool. I'm really like caught up in this right now. I'm just trying to hold on to this idea. Debut album. It's blowing in with all these incredible songs to begin with. Let's keep rolling. It's done if you own in your ass and you roll on. Like my has been hot for so long yeah. That fucking fall fall fall. 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 Stones if you live in the glass house and if you got a glass jaw, you should watch your mouth <laughs> your face. Have your ass running mumbling to the jake. Niggas wear flags, cause the colors match their clothes, they get caught in the kind of production swelling here. What a great combination of vocal sound and production. Just strong, strong sound. 
Yeah, that shit was fucking. That was great. That gets a heart. That was great. It's still great. That production is really fucking good. Who did the production? Oh, Eminem did. That's right. I already forgot. Yeah, that was good. That's good shit. That was good shit. All right, track four is Many Men. Now, I have heard this before. Uh, I'm, I'm familiar with it, but I have not sat with the lyrics. I, I The last time I heard this was a couple months back. I was doing a, a singles live stream, and someone put this up, and so we listened to this, <clears throat> and I, I liked it. So I'm not, I don't know, you know, I don't, I, I probably only heard it a couple times, but I am familiar with this track, and I gotta, I gotta, Sometimes I get a little uh, burpy from all the damn <laughs> carbonated beverages, right? Anyway, many men. I, this is about, well, I think it's about him getting shot up. But anyway, whatever. Produced by Dale Branch, Eminem, and Luis Resto. Let's drop in track four and let's kind of keep the idea. Debut album. It's the first time he's listened, we're going to listen to it or whatever. And so we've had What Up Gangster patiently. Now we roll into Many Men. You gotta go get something to eat, man. You ain't in the motherfucker. Hey, yo, man. Man, what's taking home so long, son? Fifty, calm down. Let me come. I hope the oh, fuck. I see something. Hold up. Hold up. Because he got shot eight times, I think. Right? Many men wish death upon me. Blood in my eye, dog, and I can't see. I'm trying to be what I'm destined to be. And niggas trying to take my life away. I put a hole in a nigga. I like how the beat kind of folds in there. On the wall, now you gon' see. Better watch how you talk when you talk about me. Cause I'll come and take your life away. Many men, many, 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 many men. Wish death on me, dog. I don't cry no more. Don't look to the sky no more. Don't cry no more. Pussy niggas put money on my head, gone. Get your refund, motherfucker. I ain't dead. I'm <laughs> Get the your in the dirt that ain't been found. I'm the underground king, and I ain't been crowned. I walk around, gun on my waist, chip on my shoulder, top, bust a clip in your face. Post to this beef ain't no <laughs> many men, many, 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 many men. Wish death on me, Lord. I don't cry no more. Don't look to the I like this no kind of like blend. This blend of like singing and rapping, you know. So far, three three tracks in. I can I, I'll say three tracks in because I'm familiar with this one. I'm noticing his flow is on the slower side, and his rhyming scheme, pretty simple, and that's fine. But it's, I'm just kind of noticing that, and I notice that more anytime he tells me, you know, how he's the greatest rapper and these are the best rhymes. It's like, well, <laughs> but what's cool with Fifty is. I feel like his strength isn't necessarily his flow specifically or his rhyming scheme specifically, but it's the combination of, I think, the slower pace, the kind of almost singing and rapping, and just the great quality of his voice, you know? He kind of, his writing style kind of reminds me of DMX a little bit. And I wonder if 50, big fan of DMX, I'm going to assume yes. But I don't know. He kind of, but he does remind me of DMX a bit and how DMX wrote as well. DMX was very straightforward. And it works. It works. There's nothing wrong with that, man. Nothing wrong with that at all. All right, let's keep going. Mercy on my soul. Somewhere my heart turned cold. Have mercy on many men. Have mercy on many, 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 many men. It's like he's flipping it around. Mercy on them. He's going to kill them back. It wouldn't feel so good if it wasn't for pain. Death gotta be easy, cause life is hard It'll leave you physically, mentally, and emotionally scarred This is for my niggas on the block Put some trees and cigars For the niggas on lock Doing life behind bars Many, 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 many men Yeah, super catchy me, Super Lord, catchy, man yeah, The chorus no is just like <laughs> Don't look to the sky no more Have mercy on me Have mercy on my soul Somewhere my heart turned cold Have mercy on many men yeah, and I love how it, the the structure of the chorus kind of like loops back onto itself. It's cool. I know he 
protect me, but I still stay with my gat and my nightmares. Niggas keep pulling checks on me. Cypher said some bitch dumb, put a hex on me. The feds didn't know much. When Brock got shot, I got a kite from the pins that told me Tuck got knocked. You have mercy on my soul. Somewhere my heart turned cold. Have mercy on many men. Many, many men. What a great many, song. Many men. Just. Wish death on me. Yeah. Great song. I enjoyed it during the singles live stream. I think I may have heard it even before then, like on a drunken live stream a couple years ago when I was doing that shit all the time. It's just got a great, great sound. Lord, I don't cry no more. Don't look to the sky no more. Have mercy on me. Have mercy on my soul. That section right there, <clears throat> lyrically, is very, very interesting. <clears throat> I feel like uh, it's kind of you know it's kind of a weird way of just saying I accept the world that I am in, and I will now play by the rules of said world. You know, and it's it's kind of an interesting thing because it's. It's not like he's rejecting God by saying that, he, but he is saying, I'm, I'm going to follow the rules of the world I'm in rather than the rules that you're trying to teach me type of a thing. So there is some rejection, but not quite. But I also feel like there's this another layer of, if you go back to the previous track, you know, uh, I'm innocent because I was born, like I was a, I'm a baby born dead or something like that. I, can't, I already can't remember exactly how it goes. It's almost like this idea of, look, God, you put me here and I have to deal with all this shit. So I'm going to. That kind of thing. That kind of thing. Huh. Every night I talk to God, but he don't say nothing back. I know he's protecting me, but I still stay with my cat. And I, this reminds me of that joke, you know, the person in the flood and the flood waters are rising. Somebody comes by with a boat. Hey, come on, let's go. Oh, no, the Lord will save me. And then the waters are higher. Somebody else comes by with a boat. Oh, no, 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 the Lord will save me. Then they're on the roof and a helicopter comes by. No, 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 the Lord will save me. Dies, goes to heaven. Lord, how come you didn't save me? Is that two boats and a helicopter? <laughs> you know, like, what the fuck else do you want from me? This The, the idea of, you know, I, I'm sure there are plenty of uh, good honest wholesome christians who would say well this isn't this is terrible he has a gun with him although ironically they're probably huge you know second amendment supporters but you know the idea of god protecting you and in doing so i'm going to dispose of all of the tools god has given me for protection it's kind of a weird idea right so i don't i don't have any problem with that of yeah yeah and so on the eighth day, the Lord did create guns <laughs> so that you might be strapped. <laughs> I don't know why. It's a, kind of in a silly mood today. Honestly, I just feel good. Kind of just happy. And you know what? I'm kind of excited about this experience, this album, because I, I didn't realize just how fucking massive it is. And it's kind of massive. <clears throat> huh. Okay. Okay, sunny days. What would be special for us? For yeah, you know the good and the bad. He he kind of hits that on the second verse there. I don't think I think we're good. I think we're good on lyrics. They're all pretty straightforward. Not a whole lot to tear apart. Uh, let's move on. Track five is called Into Club. It has one point almost one point three billion streams. Massive song. I don't know if I've heard this before. I the song name is not familiar to me. Produced by Dr. Dre, Mike Elizondo, I'll say, Elizondo. Here we go, track five, In The Club. Go, 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 oh yeah, I've heard go, this. This is on Bad Boys 2. Go, we watched, my wife and I just watched that movie the other day, it's Bad Boys 2. Oh, it's, it's your birthday. Oh. <laughs> yeah, of course, of course. Taking drugs, I'm in the having sex, I ain't in the making love. So come give me a hug, get in the getting rough. You can find me in the club. I 
Yeah, holy shit. Holy shit. When you say like him and them and the house, they want to fuck. The homie ain't nothing to change. Hold down, G's up. I see exhibit in the cut. Ain't nigga roll that weed up. Bro, you watch how I move and mistake. Holy shit, dude. Been hit with a few shells, but now I walk with a limp. I'm in the habit of sex. I ain't in the making of love. God damn, dude. Give me a hug. Give me a hug. Give me a hug. So I I remember now that I want to like uh, you know defend myself a little bit here right for not really knowing this song it's familiar I've heard it but a lot of you think how the fuck have you not heard this song like I've I've kind of heard it what I know more is the go shawty it's your birthday it's your birthday like that was all over the place that was a huge like pop culture thing well there's a lot of I have like this pop culture gap because from the end of '99 until. To, well, in, from the end of 99 until 2005, end of 2005, I was in the Navy. I did two deployments. I was gone. I was just gone a lot. So there's a lot of shit that happened early 2000s where, no, it never, it never really registered. This registers because I just remember that being everywhere. Fuck it. It was like in movies and shit and people were saying all the time. Like, and I never really knew where it came from. But here you go. In the club. 50 Cent. Great sound. Fucking Dr. Dre, man. He can put some shit together. Let's keep going. Oh, my God. It's kind of cool to, like, actually hear this all the way through. What a great fucking song, dude. Great club song. What a great club. You can find me in the club. Bottle full of bub. Look, mammy, I got the ex if you're into taking drugs. I'm into having sex. I ain't into making love. I mean, just super catchy. His voice sounds fucking phenomenal. Production sounds phenomenal. God damn. Huh. When you sell like Eminem, them, them hoes, they want to fuck. <laughs> I like his flow here. Like this like singing rhythmic sound. That higher hit, I love that. That like little, sounds like even like a little, just a single string guitar strum. And oh my god, I could just, I could only imagine how much this got bumped in the club and how great it probably sounds on just massive sound systems. Just fucking boom, 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 boom. <laughs> great song. And two, you know, another thing, it's only three minutes. Only three minutes. So it's like, that's in every fucking, I'm sure, like every single club rotation. Because, you know, they kind of want to get through the songs. They don't want long ass songs, they want the shorter ones. But three minutes, totally a club banger. Because I know so much <laughs> about the clubs. <laughs> wow. Wow. Finally heard In the Club by 50 Cent. And I was familiar with the beat, and mostly because of Bad Boys 2. It's, it's, there's a part of. Bad Boys 2, where that song is, is highlighted. All right. Well, kind of just temporary pause to consider the idea of you know, listening to this debut album for the first time back in 2003 and going, holy shit, who is this guy? Who's this 50 Cent guy? No wonder it blew up. I mean, that's how you open your album, those four tracks? Goddamn. I'm glad I'm wearing Fire Jam. Very appropriate. Very appropriate for today. Track... Six is called High All the Time, uh, produced by Shea Money XL, Eminem, and DJ Rad. Drop it in, track six. Hey, what is this? It's that Guito, Kelly Boone. I don't need Dom, Perignon, I don't need Chris. Tango, Ray, and Alize, I don't need shit. Nigga, I'm high all the time. I smoke that good shit. I stay high. This almost sounds familiar. Maybe not. 
purple haze and some chocolate. Give me a Dutch and a lighter, I spout shit. And stay high all the time. I smoke that good shit. I'm high all the time. And I'm on some hook shit. Every time I roll up, <laughs> niggas holla, roll up. Then I tell them, roll up. You ain't getting money, you ain't smoking in my Benzo. 20 inch Lorenzo, smoking a window. High as a motherfucker, I be on the back streets. Niggas know I clap heat. Only if you got beat, man, you better holla at me. Niggas get locked. Good rich sound in the production. Every time I pop up a lot going on in my hood. Tango Ray Alice say I don't need shit, nigga. I'm high all the time. I stay high all the time. I'm on some bullshit. Give me some drove purple hands. That's funny, man. Give me a good shit. That's funny. I spout shit. And stay high all the time. I smoke that good shit. The, the chorus has just got such great production, though. It's so rich. And if you heard, I'd have let off a clip. It ain't because I be high, I be high. But I twist that la 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 la. I get high as I want a nigga. Go against me for show, sure, you're a goner, nigga. I don't smoke to calm my nerves, but I got beat. Finna crush my enemies like I crushed the ass. She should you love me, tell me you love me. Don't stare at me, man. If David could go against Goliath with a stone, I could go at Nas and Jigga, both for the throne. Oh, and shit. Shit, if David could go against Goliath with a stone, I could go at Nas and Jigga, both for the throne. Kind of a cool little line, though, right? Because it's a uh, it's a sign of respect as well. You know, calling those two guys Goliath, but also saying, I'm, I'm coming for you. <laughs> the G-Unit thing, I touched on, I think, briefly at the very, very beginning. But I remember that being a thing, too. G-Unit. G-Unit. And I was like, I don't know what the fuck. G unit is an idea. I still kind of don't know, but now I know a little bit more. It's related to 50 Cent, at least probably like, I don't know, his his circle of friends or something. Or actually, I could click the annotation. Let's get crazy. Good G unit. Okay. Well, whatever. Not a whole lot of explanation there. That's more explaining the lines before it. I shoot the dice. I hello, get up girls. Daddy needs new shoes. Daddy needs Pirelli's to look mean on 22s. I actually know what that means. It's tires and rims. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> Ste- Listen to this. I mean, this is a time traveling back to 2003, right? Stash box, Xbox, laptop. Fa- now, when he says Xbox, he means Xbox. Like, the first one. <laughs> the big, the first one. Halo. The first Halo. Y'all remember that? Oh, yeah. Halo. Back when Madden wasn't pure dog shit. Those those games were pretty good back then too, man. I remember was it like two thousand four or five or whatever. There was one with Michael Vick on the cover. I played the shit out of that one because I was on deployment and just fucking played a shit ton of Madden out on an aircraft carrier in the middle of the ocean, God knows where. <laughs> oh man. Huh. You know, in terms of lyrics, they're I mean they're they're solid. Um. But I, I want to mention that I guess if there's not really a whole lot to pick apart, not a, not a lot to maybe read into, I just let them be what they are. You know, I don't, I don't need to fucking explain, you know, if you got beef, you, <laughs> you better holler at me. Like, I think we can all understand that kind of shit for the most part. All right, let's keep going. Let's keep going. High all the time. I'm super jelly. God, I wish I could be. Well, not high all the time, but at least... Have the option. That'd be nice. Chris, Tango Ray, I have to say I don't need shit, nigga. I'm high all the time. I smoke that good shit. I stay high all the time. I smoke that good shit. Give me some gold, purple haze, and some chocolate. Give me a nut and a lighter, I spout shit. And stay high all the time. I smoke that good shit. I'm high all the time, and I'm on some bullshit. No, besides me, who right lines and squeeze nines and half holes in the hood sniffing on white lines. You don't want me to be your kid's role model. I teach him how to buck them 380s and load up them hollows. Have shorty fresh off the stoop, ready to shoot. Big blunt in his mouth, deuce deuce in his boot. Sit in the crib, sipping Guinness, watching Minutes. Then, oh lord, have a young nigga bucking shit like the old dog. My team, they depend on me oh, when it's cool crunch right time. I eat a nigga food and raw day like it's lunchtime. Do you need? Are you ready? Oh, cool. I like how he's kind of singing this portion now. Ready or not, here I come, come, come. Good song. 
I'll put a heart next to that one. Cool little piano there at the end. Yeah. So far, I mean, I'm, I really am trying to, I don't know why I don't do this with every album, but I just feel like because this one's so big, it's his debut. I really am just trying to appreciate this from an album experience, rather song to song that builds on itself potentially. You know, I don't, I don't really expect like a story. I, I, I more expect just, you know, good songs. But again, the, that first time listen for anybody, right? Like, holy shit, holy shit, holy shit. <laughs> it just keeps coming. So we'll see how track seven is with Heat. I do want to touch on some lyrics, though, actually real quick. He's talking about, you don't want me to be your kid's role model. I'll teach him how to buck them 380s and load up them hollows. Have Shorty fresh off the stoop, ready to shoot. Big blunt in his mouth, deuce deuce in his boot. <laughs> Set the crib safe in Guinness, watching Menace. Then, oh, Lord, have a young guy bucking shit like he's O-Dog. <laughs> That's funny. I'm sure there are plenty of parents upset by these troublesome lyrics in the new 50 Cent album. Did you hear that? Did you hear what he said? Awful. And kids are listening to this just awful while they're playing their Xbox and smoking the marijuanas. <laughs> oh, man. It's fun sometimes to just go back, you know, think back to being younger and all the shit that we used to do and how fun it was. And then you get all depressed like, oh, well, that ain't like that. No more. <laughs> Remember the good old days? Yeah. Yeah, those are nice, weren't they? Now, to for me, to be honest, I, I what's fun for me is my life has consistently pretty much gotten better as the years have gone on, which is always the goal, right? I mean, that's nice. Nice spot to be in. Okay, track seven is called Heat, produced by Dr. Dre. It's nice to hear some more Dre. I like Dre. All right, here we go. Track seven, Heat. You want some of this shit? I don't want that shit. I don't give a fuck. I don't play that shit. And I'm finna bust a cat with a nigga. Let's shut the fuck up. Huh. Slow down, slow down, slow down. You see that brick house right there? That's the nigga crib. When he come out, he's gonna tighten his ass up. I'm gonna get in the car. All right. Huh. Uh-oh. This deep cocking and dumping the drama really means nothing to me. I'm out oh, out trippy. Blow your brains out. Brains out. It's your no time to cock it. No way you can stop it when niggas run up on you with them things out. Things out. I do what I gotta do. I don't care if I get caught. The DA could play this motherfucker take me caught. I kill you. I ain't huh. Trippy. I ain't playing. Get you slipping, I'm a kid. I ain't playing. Hear what I'm saying, homie. I ain't playing. Keep thinking I'm candy. To your fucking school, get popped in your brain behind the beat. top. Like Jack in a box. Yeah. In the hood, summertime is the killing season. It's hot out with this bitch. That's a good enough reason. If you were smart, you'd be shook at me. Cause I get tired of looking for you. Spray your mama crib and let your ass look for me. This deep cock oh, and dump the drama really means nothing to me. I ride by and blow your brains out. Brains out. It's no time to cock it. No way to stop it when niggas run up on you with them bangs out. Is this like Dr. Dre in his like experimental phase or something? <laughs> like I'm not I'm not into this beat. I'm not into, and honestly I'm not really into this song. This doesn't have very many listens, but you know whatever. And I you know I'm kind of curious. I wonder why. I, I I don't really like the beat, but then also uh, you know the the content. Not that I have you know like a huge problem with the content. Although you know there's another fucking mass shooting in uh, where was it Maine like two days ago. Some dude just strolled up in a fucking bully alley and killed 16 people. And so I'm less enthused by these types of lyrics. Again, I'm probably with it. I'm not really even going to complain about it, honestly. But I'm just like, it's not really something I would want to listen to. So I think this will probably end up being a skip for me, Heat. But the beat is just kind of like jarring. It's kind of jarring, you know? And, and especially after... The previous five songs, which all just had great production, good beat, good, just great rich sounds going on. This one's kind of like, okay, okay, sure. <laughs> there was a part in here, uh, God's on your side, shit, I'm all right with that. Because <laughs> we're going to reload them clips and come right back. 
I like that line. And then this two part, you know, when that window rolled down and the AK come out, you can squeeze your little handgun until you run out. <laughs> and then people get religious after they start bleeding, saying, Lord, Jesus, help me, because their ass leaking. I think, I think what 50 Cent is doing, he's solid. I think he's very solid on this track, but I don't really like, I don't like the production. It's just not, that ain't working for me. Slipping on my kid. I ain't playing. I think I don't like the fact that the production is continually being interrupted, I guess. Yeah, this one, this one's gonna be one for me. It's alright. So it goes. It was okay. I mean, whatever. But I, I kind of feel like that's a skip. I just, I, I don't feel like it's terrible. But there's, there's nothing about the song that I'm interested in. I don't, I'm not into the production. Not into the lyrical content. Fifty sounds good, but you know, that's only one out of the three, right? Every now and then, I kind of sit around and think about, you know, what is it with this country and guns and. They're just trying to figure out how, not necessarily how to solve the problem, because I don't, I don't think you do solve the problem, unfortunately, uh, unless there's just substantial, massive change, and the people that run our government will never, ever, ever. <laughs> they don't. Well, anyway, but I think about you know the history of the country. You know, got the Revolutionary War, and how did how did that end up being successful? Because people had guns, and, you know, and there's a bunch of farmers and shit running around <laughs> shooting guys in their red coats. And then you think about expanding west and and moving across the country and clashing with tribes, and you know, having guns helped a lot with that. But it's just guns have always been a part of this country. Always, it's just how it is and I don't say that to excuse it or, or anything like that I'm not trying to do that but it's just I wonder why it's so inbred into our culture and I think part part of that answer is because it's just been there since day one you know anyway okay well let's move on to track eight it's called If I Can't produced by Dr. Dre Mike Elizondo I think that's how you say it <laughs> now in terms of 2003 debut album and putting it on, Heat would have thrown me off. Like, oh, oh, shit. There's a flaw. You know, that, that, would, have, that would have thrown me off. And I mean, it does now. But I, I say this, even though I'm listening to it for the first time here now, I'm really trying to be back in 2003 and trying to, like, be in that moment, even though I'm clearly not. But let's see if track eight recovers. A lot of listens on track eight. So here we go. Track eight, if I can't. Yeah. Here we go. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Ah, I need a little guitar in there. Addition to production there. Cool. Extra hits right there. 
till he's smart with his mouth to smack him. You hold your strap, you might come back, so grab him. I don't fight fair. I'm dirty, dirty. I'm from Southside Jamaica, Queens, nigga, you heard me? Yeah. When the street lights come on, niggas blasting knives. Uh-huh. Get locked up to read books to pass the time. Woo. And the game is ups and downs, so I stay on the grind. Niggas on my dick more than my bitch, I stay on their mind. <laughs> ain't nothing they can do to stab my shine. Uh-uh. This is God's plan, homie. This ain't mine. I'ma let the champagne bottle pop. I'ma take it to the top. Show God, the choruses on this album are so catchy. Holy shit. Yeah. Dr. Dre, Aftermath, Shady. <laughs> I love that little bit of guitar in there. Just a cool little lick of guitar. You know, one thing I was thinking about on this track, it just kind of popped in there, was one person had mentioned this morning how this was like big 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 and then a couple years later here comes this guy kanye west and kind of changes things up you know and people have described to me the early 2000s and how it really kind of went i don't want to say necessarily pop i'll probably describe this incorrectly but the idea of basically it shifted out of this like hardcore gangster rap essentially it sounds like from what i recall and what I slightly remember is record companies found a way to like really cash in on this and turn it into its own industry. And so it's all these big music videos and all the shiny shit. And, you know, so it evolved out of that hardcore gangster rap. You still like hear gangster rap type lyrics, but the, the sound has shifted. It's almost from, you know, th- some of that fucking grimy production and shit just hardcore like that cold cold shit from mob deep or some of the stuff that wu-tang did and you know this is a lot more like i would call this mainstream you know almost like poppy sound he's singing the choruses are catchy <clears throat> but then i hear hear the production on this one and i think about college dropout and college dropout has a different sound but you can almost hear how that kind of stepped off of this a bit not to say that kanye is trying to do anything to copy this but it, i i can almost like link some of these sections together in terms of hip-hop which is neat for me you know it's not something i've necessarily been able to do before I like if i can't that one gets a heart back on track now the next one doesn't has hardly any lessons but whatever who cares uh let's move on to Track 9, which is called Bloodhound, featuring Young Buck, produced by Sean Blaze. That name sounds familiar, but I don't recall from where. Anyway, Track 9, Bloodhound. Oh, Funky. I'm out, actually. Trippy. Good little drum beat in there. Trippy production. Huh. 50 cent, get a bump. 50 cent, that's my name. Man, I ain't fucking playing. I move on you with that mag, man. Come up there, watch your chain. For I blow out your brains. Shells at your chest, go out your bag, man. See me, I put in work. Man, I've been doing huh. work. For so long when niggas get laid out. Sitting on some change. To unit, that's the gang. Come through his stunt and you can pop that. I love the punk crack. Love to stay strapped. Huh. I really have no idea how I feel about this. I I I am so torn with like and it's weird because it's not like a, a torn between love it or hate it. It's a torn between barely no or barely yes. I the production is this will be interesting to see how I feel about it with more listens. Like, will I get into this one or will I just go no? Because right now I'm just constantly like wavering. I'm like, yeah, no, it's good. No, yeah, no. <laughs> like, huh, trippy, trippy sound. Interesting. You know, what, what, what is also interesting with this track too is 50 Cent. This is, I think, the fastest I've heard him rap thus far on the album. So he's picked up his speed here. Lyrically, you know, honestly, at this point, we're, we're track nine. Lyrically, I'm kind of 
losing a little interest. You know, like a lot of, a lot of gun talk. Which I mean, whatever. It's never really been wildly interesting to me. Um, you know, especially to. And I wonder if this is like a product of just industry and you know what is expected to be said on records versus what an artist might want to say on a record. But also having some awareness of Fifty Cent's you know life and and history and you know coming up from just rough rough shit. I'm sure this is realistic for him. <clears throat> but lyrically, I'm like, okay, more more songs about guns. Huh? Okay, okay, cool. Whatever. Let's keep going. This is the production is really I don't I really don't know how I feel about this one. I love the pump crack. I love to stay strapped. I love to squeeze gas. Show him it up. I love to hit the block. I love my two clocks. Huh, I don't know, man. I, it feels like an old school video game sound. No one niggas gon' hate me just for the simple fact they know that I'm a rider. I got a hell of a aim. I keep on telling you, man. I swear ain't nobody gon' find you. When I admit it, I live it. I knock a ball off. Motherfucking chopper. I love the punk crap. I don't know. I really don't know. I have to. I'm, I'm assuming. I don't know if this is true, but I'm assuming this little. The little. The roofs. The. The. the I don't know why I can't just make the sound. Is that like a slight nod to DMX? Slight nod, maybe? Hopefully? I'm gonna I'm just gonna assume that it is. It seems like it. Cause we know where you be, and we know where you stay, and we'll come tripping through your set, man. Man, you heard what I said. Yeah, I think this one's a miss. This one's a miss. No fucking dead man. Cause you's a middle man. What you don't understand, use a fucking fake ass connect, man. I love the punk crack. Yeah. Just drops right into back down. <clears throat> That's a miss for me. I think, I think it's a combination of. I really don't have any strong opinion either way about the production. It's kind of throws me off, but lyrically, I'm just not interested. Like, the whole thing is basically about guns and shit. It's like, okay, I don't, I don't care. Like these kind of songs, in terms of lyrics, they they don't they don't captivate me in any way. I'm not interested. Because I feel like I've heard it a, a hundred times before. You know, that's really the thing for me. Huh, Bloodhound. Okay, well, okay. Okay. Album starts out so strong, you know, now a little, a little bumpy. Okay, well, that's okay. You know, we'll keep going and see where this experience goes. Next track is called Back Down. It's produced by Dr. Dre. It is track 10. Let's jump in. Back Down. Yeah. Oh, actually, you know what, though? We'll start it from the beginning since I kind of... Fucked it up there. Mm, that's the shit I remember from Dave Chappelle. Ch -ch 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 <laughs> nice sound right there. Holy shit. Little dirty ass kid. You wanna be hard. Uh -huh. if you get knocked, you get fucked in the yard. He's a pop tar sweetheart. You soft in the middle. Oh, uh -huh. shit. So watch what's the stage for your necklace. Uh -huh. Who is this about? When you look at me, if you look closely, fit me, don't back down. Who is this about? Who is this about? Ja Rule's track, It's Murder, which features Jay Z DMX. After getting the features from big time artists, he must have thought he made it in the music industry. Huh, so this is about Ja Rule. Interesting. Ja Rule has a clean sheet and claims to have so I don't know what I don't know about this at all. I have no idea about the clash between 50 and Ja Rule. Ja Rule has a clean sheet and claims to have a reputation of drug dealing and gangbanging 50 Cent, having grown up in the same neighborhood as Ja, debunks his street cred. <laughs> Ja was also a Jehovah's Witness, so he probably didn't even get to trick or treat in the, <laughs> the annotation says. Okay, 
Interesting, Ja Rule. I remember the name. So he's like knocking everybody. Irv Gotti, Jaws Boss, which is he was Suge Knight, CEO of Death Records, who was fucking total psychopath, as far as I could tell. Interesting. Interesting. You know, the previous track, I was kind of knocking the lyrics, like, I'm just not into it because it's about guns and shit. But, and I'm glad I clicked the annotation because it made it very clear at the end that he was talking about someone specific, but. That makes it a little bit more interesting. If it just would have been another verse where he's talking shit, you know, I'll fucking do the. Now, although the line, your dirty little, your little dirty ass kids, I'll fucking erase them. God damn. That's crazy. Wow. So I'm going to say they're not friends, 50 Cent's and Ja Rule. Wow. Holy shit. Any living thing that cannot coexist with the kid must decease existing. Ha, huh, trippy. Well, leave comments. Let me know about the fucking beef between 50 and Ja Rule. This is crazy. This is crazy. Great sound. This part right here sounds so fucking good, man. The chorus, every chorus structure on this album has been fantastic. Gets a heart. Oh no, he didn't say anything about John. I want to pause real quick just to click on this to see who is he supposedly representing. Like, country to public, it's not supposed to be an imitation of Ashante, but rather a Ja Rule stylist. Okay. Okay. So this is this Alex Thomas guy is is impersonating Ja Rule's stylist. Okay. <laughs> Let's keep going. 50 Cent came back into the picture. They better not put their hands on Jeff Rule. First of all, they do not know that I am a 12 degree pink belt. Okay, I will dice his ass up like a little piece of celery. Okay? Cause see. <laughs> wow. Wow. Jet Lee, Li, that's a name I haven't seen in a while. He was big early 2000s too. I remember that guy. Wow. Holy shit. I mean, he just lays it all out, doesn't he? Like, ah, wow. Well, huh. Okay. Okay. There you go. <laughs> huh. Well, that one gets a heart. Great song. Great song. Now I'm kind of interested to, you know, well, it's funny too, because like no one's ever suggested I listen to Ja Rule. Well, maybe not no one, but absolutely at the bottom of the list in terms of suggestions to react to. Now I kind of want to, although I wonder if I'd even be into it. I don't know. Huh. I, I've got like four thoughts going through my head right now. I'm trying to like let all the trains depart the station and I'll just keep going. <laughs> okay. Okay. Track 11 is called Pimp. P-I-M-P, I should say. Produced by Danan. I'll say, I don't know. I don't know. But this is another big one. Over 600 million streams. Maybe I've heard this before. Maybe. We'll see. Track 11, Pimp. I don't know what you heard oh, about yeah. Me. Cool sound already. This is not me. familiar to me. I don't know this one. 
Then I'm a motherfucking beat. Now shorty, now shorty, she in the club, she dancing for dollars. She got a thing for that Gucci, that Fendi, that Prada, that BCBG, Bulberry, Dosi, and Cabana. She feed them fools fantasies, they pay her cause they want her. I spit a little G, man, and my gang got her. I will later had her ass up in the Ramada. Them trick niggas. Cool the beat. I'm finally settling into the sound of the beat. I don't know what you heard about me. One of my favorite South Park episodes is when Butters starts his kissing company. <laughs> he's, he's basically learning how to be a pimp. And he goes to the player's ball, the pimp and player's ball or some shit, the convention. <laughs> and all these pimps are telling him what to do. And it's fucking phenomenal. But there's a part where he's talking to one of the girls, one of his girls. And she's like, wait, you keep all the money? He's like, no, no, no. I just hold the money because bitches can't be trusted. <laughs> oh, God. If you've never seen that South Park episode, you got to watch it. Just look up uh, Butter's Kissing Company, South Park, whatever. It's so fucking funny, man. God, it's one of the best episodes ever. So good. You know, I don't want to I don't want to complain about the lyrics. The lyrics are whatever. And I really think at this point, the lyrics are <clears throat> almost disposable, not quite. I mean, it's just, but I, I do have this kind of feeling of, I remember something I saw. It was talking about the early 2000s of hip hop. And, you know, I said this earlier, just how basically the record companies were totally fucking cashing in on it. And it feels like that. It feels like, I don't want to say like the lyrics were like marketed or something, but it's like, it's like somebody told these guys, Hey, no, no, no. You got to make songs like this. This is, this is what the audience wants. You got to make songs like this, make songs about being a pimp and you're at the club and fucking you're gangster and all this shit. Like that's what the audience wants. And so that's what we got to put on the record. And I don't say that to be like, I mean, I know it's Slim Shade or Eminem and Dr. Dre and, and all those guys. And I don't want to say that, in a way that makes it sound like 50 had no control over what he gets to say in his, his album or anything like that. But I don't know. I guess I don't really know what I'm saying. And it's not like he has to rap about things that are super intimate about him. Or, you know, I don't, but this, it does. I don't, I don't know. I, really, I don't really know what I'm trying to get at. I can feel it. It's, it's, it's more of like a sensation in my brain that hasn't completely coalesced into an actual clear thought yet <clears throat> anyway let's keep going cool sound very cool sound and i mean i think that's what is i'm starting to pick up on is these songs sound great and the lyrics for me are kind of like well whatever there's some funny lines they're fucking around they're having a good time they're enjoyable songs and i guess maybe that's what's pulling me into this idea of this was kind of built for mainstream i don't i don't know who cares let's keep going I don't know what you heard about me. What a bitch can't get a dollar out of me. I, I, it just sounds fucking like phenomenal. No the sound is so good. And I'm a motherfucking PRM. I'm about my money, you see. Girl, you can holler at me. If you fucking with me, I'm on PRM. Now what you see on TV, you don't gotta let me breathe. Head full of head, bitch. I'm a PRM. Told you fools before. I stick with the tools. I keep a bin, some rims, and some jewels. I holler at a hoe. Till I got a bitch confused She got on pay less than me I got on gay shoes I'm shopping for the chillers In the summer the cheaper Man it's so you can have her When I'm done I ain't gon' keep her Man bitches come and go Hey nigga pimpin' no This ain't a secret You ain't gotta keep it on the low Bitch choose on me I hear you strippin' in the street Put my other hoes down You get your ass beat now I don't know what you heard about me uh -huh. But a bitch can't get a dollar out of me <laughs> No gotta like no perms you can't see then I'm a motherfucking P.I.M.P. Yeah. In Hollywood, they say there's no business like show business. In the hood, they say there's no business like hope business. You know? <laughs> oh you see, I talk a little fast, but if you listen a little fast, I ain't got to slow down for you to catch up, bitch. <laughs> yeah. I think, I think part of what's happening for me is 
I the the collision the 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 split in my mind. What I was trying to formulate earlier when I was talking and not really saying anything, using a lot of words but not saying anything. Right? There's a clash for me with really enjoying the sound of the song, but also having zero interest in what's being said by the song. That's the divide for me, and I'm really starting to feel that throughout this album now some songs it doesn't really matter like in the club is just super fucking easy i mean that's a great song um but as we as we move through these tracks and you know it is what it is but as we move through these tracks i find myself lyrically just not interested but the sound is great and so i don't know how that's going to play out for me and just my own style of of the music i enjoy what i want to hear you know Hmm. Cause that song sounds phenomenal, but I just, <laughs> and, and look, I'm not, I'm not trying to say that this is supposed to be taken seriously. And, and so, you know, I'm offended cause he's talking like, I don't really care, but even in a, a non-serious avenue and, and just literally kicking back and enjoying the music, I just hear him talking about being a pimp all the time. And it's like, well, whatever, you know? And so anytime I get to a situation where the mute, the lyrics are kind of disposable, well, but but then if it sounds great, like so, here's an example. Here we'll we'll move over to the rock lane for a bit. There's a band, grunge band, Stone Temple Pilots, a fucking one of my favorite bands. When I, especially when I was a teenager and they were up and and big and all that shit. So great sound, great singer, great I just great fucking band. But the lyrics were pure nonsense, <laughs> pure nonsense. Now I still loved it because the way the guy sang, his voice was phenomenal. But if you ever like listen to the lyrics, what is he talking about? I have no fucking idea. Just pure nonsense. <laughs> so that example is kind of funny just because, well, the lyrics there are also disposable. So why why is this snagging on me more? And and so I think really it's part of my brain is my brain is taking it a little too seriously. Just relax. It's just a song. Don't make a big deal out of it. Who cares? It sounds great, etc. But it is funny that I do get snagged on, on these things like that, you know? <laughs> anyway, let's keep going. Track 12 is called Like My Style. It's featuring Tony Yayo, produced by Rock Wilder. Here we go. Track 12. Uh -huh. I know you like my style. Uh -huh. You like how I break it down. Uh -huh. I know you like my style. Uh -huh. You like how I break it down. God, I just... know you like my style. Uh -huh. You uh, like cool. how I break it down. Cool. Wanna get rich, I show you how. Wanna get rich, I show you how. On your mark, it's set, let's go. Switch the flow, teach you how to turn. Yeah, yeah you switch in the cool. door. Yeah. 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 Don't nobody bomb harder. Uh -huh. You heard what I said, boy, I'm hot, I'm hot. The whole batch, they say, he's so crazy. The snitches, they say, he tried to spray me, but that's me chunky. He's trying to play me. The aftermath of my rap is so shady. No matter how hard you try, you can't stop it. I'll catch a stunt in the really cool cockpit. Huh. you hold it. Out of pocket, friend, find out how my P40 block kicks. But do you need some help? Chill, yeah, yo, I got this. See, where I'm from in the G's trying to knock us. Yeah. It's what I thought that it's me selling the choppers. Uh -huh. Man, I ain't give them little niggas no product. Uh -huh. I know you like my style. Yeah, uh -huh. super catchy. I mean, it sounds style. great. Uh -huh. It really does sound great. Uh -huh. I like this one. Uh -huh. I know you like my style. Uh -huh. How much do you like my style? Uh -huh. You like how I break it. I like this like kind of distorted synth a little bit, or reverb, or whatever you call it. I like this build portion quite a bit. Really, really ready, ready. You think you're ready? You're not. Huh. I like that one. That gives a heart for me. I like that one, even though it doesn't have a lot of listens. I like the production. Fifty sounds good. Good beat. Just good sound. Starting to figure out 
this this snag I'm having. And I think it just kind of popped into my mind was I think with this album, the a problem, I shouldn't even say the problem, but like a, a problem with this album is you could take this album if you wanted to talk shit on hip hop, if you wanted to really pump your stereotype cliche idea of hip hop's just about guns and bitches and money. This album would be like your perfect fucking example for that. And I think the reason why I snag on that is because that was my idea, you know, three, four years ago. That's what I used to think. That's all it's about, right? And so this whole journey and dispelling that and now to kind of come back to an album that was big, massive, popular, huge numbers, blow up debut, all that shit. And here's all of those elements, you know? And I kind of wonder, was this album one of the albums that people who wanted to put down rap and, and, and put hip hop in a bad light, if they use this as an example? It's 20 years ago. This is 20 years ago. So, yeah, I don't know. I don't remember a lot of, like, like news stories about this one. I remember this one blowing up. I don't really remember hearing a lot about 50 Cent. So I don't think, but I, I don't know. I, hopefully you guys can understand where I'm coming from. This is just all a personal thing. I'm not saying anything. I, I mean, the album, honestly, is, is pretty fucking good. I'm just trying to sort out the little inner workings in my own brain. You know, that's all That's all that's happening here. And you guys are seeing it happen in real time. <laughs> huh. Huh. Because, I mean, there's been some stuff, you know, the album starts out with a couple a couple lines lyrically where it's like, okay, 50s, he's kind of giving you a little peek into his life here and there. But for the most part, that's been tossed to the side. You know, it's all been tossed aside. This is very essentially like commercial. That's the word I want to say. Not pop, not necessarily mainstream, commercial. This feels commercial. And look, trying to make money off selling records, that's the goal, right? So I'm not I'm not gonna criticize it being commercial because if that's what you're gonna make, that's what you're gonna do. And they fucking nailed it. I mean, they certainly nailed that aspect of it. But is that necessarily what I'm into? Not really. But is that true? You know, it, it gets into this whole thing of, well, if it's commercial, if it's mainstream, if it's popular, does that make it bad? No, no. Well, then what the fuck's the problem? <laughs> no, no, it's fun. Fun experience. I'm definitely kind of going through it right now in real time. All these little opinions that are like banging around and clashing with each other inside my own head as I move through this album. Track 13 is called Poor Little Rich, produced by Shea Money XL. Let's drop in track 13. I like like my style. I was kind of, so far, you know, uh, I've got hearts next to everything except for the two that don't really have a lot of listens. Although back down, I put a heart next to also. I liked back down. That was crazy, crazy diss track. And so I was wondering if I was going to not enjoy like my style because not a lot of listens there, but I do. And this one also does not have a lot of listens. So it'll be interesting to see if poor little Rich is uh, good enough to get a heart from me. Here we go. Huh. I let my watch talk for me, my whip talk for me, my gat talk for me. Bah! What up, homie? My watch saying hi, shorty, we could be friends. My, my watch is saying. Quit playing, bitch, get in. Man, ring saying we can hit them all together. Shorty, it's only right that we ball together. I'm in the bigger things, y'all niggas, y'all know my style. Your wrist bling, bling, my shit bling, black. My pinky ring talk, it say 50, I'm I like that little. That's why these niggas is on my dick. Some give me some love, my hits. Flex my man, he gon' fuck my shit. See, I'm alive, man, I really don't care. I, don't care. I tell the hoes whatever they want here. You try and play me, I'ma blaze you then. My cross cost more than the trip your mama raised you in. I was a poor nigga, now I'm a rich nigga. Yeah, super fucking catchy nigga. again, man. <laughs> Backseat fun, leave your bed. I lay you down the car and is a come and get you up. See, fit the place for keeps and fit the state for heat. I can't go commercial. They love me in the street. I can't go commercial. They love me in the street. That's kind of funny. That's kind of a funny line after everything I've said. I still do my thing. See, 
don't scream me, shut the fuck up, you know me. I'm a rich nigga, I'm a rich nigga. Now you can't tell me shit. I'll let this one run through and then I'll talk. I think I'm going to really enjoy this album when I don't pay attention to it. I think that's where I'm at right now. The, the reaction format that I use, sitting here with the lyrics, paying attention, which I, I mean, I love. And I think that's critical. I think there's so many songs out there where people miss so much. And there, I mean, it's, sometimes it's a double-edged sword, right? Because I'll... <laughs> I'll catch something. It'd be totally, like, totally wrong. <laughs> I'm interpreting the lyrics incredibly wrong. But sometimes, man, when you sit and you pay really close attention to an album, you kind of find out lyrically, oh, there's really just not anything there. You know? And, and, and that detracts from a listening experience. But with this album, it's really... This album for me, I think, is showing the most contrast between that idea of lyrically, there's just not a lot there, versus an album that sounds amazing. Because the sound is amazing. And so this comes up a lot with the trap albums I react to, where they're like, Bob, just shut up. Stop paying attention to the lyrics. Don't pay attention to the lyrics. It's just a sound. It's a vibe. I mean, this clearly is not trap. But I feel like this falls into that vein of... Don't take it seriously. Don't worry about the lyrics. Don't try and decipher anything. There's no story to follow. You're not trying to decode. It's just, he's fucking singing. He's a pimp. He's a player. He's following your bitch in the backseat. <laughs> you know, like, just don't worry about it. And so I think when I'm done with this and I do my additional listens and I don't pay attention and it's just on and it's just sound, then I can, I think I'll really, probably really, really start to enjoy this album. Not that I have not enjoyed this album. I have enjoyed this album. It's a good album. The, mu the sound is phenomenal. But I am clashing with... Essentially, at this point, I'm kind of bored with the lyrics. Know what I was thinking? Whew. Ready? Ready? Ready for a nuclear hot take? <laughs> I was like, I kind of feel like I do when I listen to Drake right now. Now, the difference being, of course, the sound is way different from Drake albums. But lyrically, I'm like... This kind of reminds me of something Drake would say. <laughs> People are going to be furious over that. Absolutely furious. So it goes. But really, the reason why I point that out, the reason why I even mention it, even though I'm going to probably just get myself <laughs> crucified for it, is because... You know, a lot of people say, oh, Bob, you're just a Drake hater. You give him all this shit about his lyrics and stuff like that. And it's like, well... Here we go. Here's the same example. I'm just not entertained by these lyrics. I don't care about this kind of shit. It's not important to me. Another thing I was thinking about during this track specifically is there's an album called The Patience by Mick Jenkins. And there's a song on there, Guapanese, fucking phenomenal song. And he's basically just railing against these artists where all they do is talk about their money, how much money they got. And they're letting their money talk for them instead of actually saying something of substance. And it's like, I'm just... In that camp. That's where I want to be. I totally agree with Mick Jenkins on that one. It's like, I want I want substance. But going back to the, you know, something I said, uh, I don't remember what it was a couple weeks ago. I'm the weird one. I'm, I'm not the normal average listener. The average listener doesn't give a fuck about the lyrics. And it comes, you hear artists essentially complain about that a lot, you know. What was it, JC? Do you even listen to the words or you just skim through it, you know? And so I just go back around in circles of, okay, this is why I'm going to criticize things, but it doesn't matter. That's not what it's for. And I'm the minority holding that opinion anyway. Anyway, whatever. There's a long ass fucking pointless rant. <laughs> I hope you guys are enjoying watching my mind chase its own tail <laughs> on this video. Because that's exactly what it's, it's just been spinning in circles, like trying to 
make this work as different ideas collide with each other. It's, it's fun. It is fun for me. <laughs> but it's kind of also like a, um, it's like I'm having my own line, online argument just in my head. <laughs> All right. Track 14 is called 21 Questions. It's featuring Nate Dogg, who I am familiar with, produced by Dirty Swift. Let's drop in. Oh, and poor little Rich. I like the sound, so that gets a heart. Yeah, here we go. Good sound. Good sound. I just want to chill and twist the lot. Catch stunts in my 745. You drive me crazy, shorty. I need to see you and feel you next to me. I provide everything you need and I like your smile. I don't want to see you cry. Got some questions that I got to ask and I hope you can come up with the answers, baby. Girl, it's easy to love me now. You love me if I was down. Yeah, out. good question there. You 21 questions. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. 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 It's easy to love me now. Would you love me if I was down? I like the guitar. Would you still Shocking, I'm sure. I like the guitar. Would you still love me? If I didn't smell so good, would you still hug me? If I got locked up and sent this to a quarter century, could I count on you to be there to support me mentally? If I went back to a hoopty for my bands, would you poof and disappear like some of my friends? If I was hit ah. and I was hurt, would you be by my side? If it was time to put in work, would you be down the ride? Do you trust me enough to tell me your dreams? I'm staring at you trying to figure how you got them jeans. If I was down, <laughs> would you say things to make me smile? I treat you how you want to be treated, just teach me how. If I was with some other chick and someone happened to see, and when you asked me about it, I said it wasn't me, would you believe me or up and leave me? How deep is our bond if that's all it takes for you to be gone? We yeah, to make this is cool. This is cool. Make it up, I do whatever it take. I love you like a fat kid love cake. You know my style. I say anything to make you smile. <laughs> <laughs> I love you like a fat kid love cake. <laughs> uh, I like this. This is nice. This is a nice change because, I, again, you know, the lyrics are, are very straightforward. There's There's not been a lot of complexity lyrically in this album, and that's fine. Even though I've been wrestling with it, you guys have been seeing me wrestle with it this whole time. But I like this. And to me, it, it brings up kind of a great question. You know, it's called 21 Questions, obviously. It's got all these different questions, of course. But there's this concept of unconditional love. I think it's total horseshit. The idea of unconditional love. Uh, that's how you end up in a toxic, abusive, one-sided relationship. Now, I have a son, and I'll always have love for my son. But if it gets to a point where it's he's that far gone, you know, it turns. You see it all the time with you know people who enable others, and in they're trying to help them, but really all they're doing is making the problem worse by supporting them in their drug addiction or whatever the fuck it is, right? And to me, the idea of unconditional love, how it's often presented, you know, I, it's true that I will always have love for my son, but if it, if it like literally got to that point where it's like, look, man, the only way I can help you is to essentially help you hit rock bottom so that you break and realize that you got to start over type of thing. And I, you know, every now and then you hear about people talking about, oh no, you know, but so and so loves me, and you know, it doesn't matter that they cheated on me and they did this, and they, you know, they treat me like oh, they love me and I love them, and blah blah. <sighs> like, like for me, there absolutely love has conditions. It has conditions. It, it kind of has to have conditions because if you're in a relationship with somebody who doesn't respect you, that's there's no love there. How do you love somebody but you don't respect them, you know? If there's no patience, if there's no willingness to listen, there's elements, in my opinion, that are required for love. And those elements can help love be built up and grow and become strong. And as those elements get removed, so will the love erode and erode away. And eventually, it's gone. Like, no. I don't love you anymore. You treat me like garbage. You don't respect me. You don't listen to me. You don't make time for me. There you go. Neat song. 
And it's nice to have something lyrically to kind of chew on a little bit, you know, something different from what we've been hearing for most of this album. And, yo, what's kind of neat, though, too, is keeping the idea of commercial, you know? Oh, you got to have that one love song on there, too. And I, it sounds like, it, it'll probably sound like I'm criticizing the album and criticizing the decisions. I'm not. I'm just saying, you know, hey. Hey, we're putting together an album and we need, we need a song about pimping. We need a club song. We need the one about money. We need the love song, you know, the girls. There you go. There you go. It's easy to love me now. Would you love me if I was down and out? Would you still love for me? There was one, what kind of got me going on this was this whole, if I, if I smelt bad or some shit like that, would you still hug me? And it's like, no. <laughs> I mean, maybe once. Maybe like my son, he does MMA and he's getting older. So he's starting to get stinky sweaty and he'll come back and he'll come, you know, give me a hug real quick. It's like, okay, just the one. (laughs) You need to take a shower. (laughs) Anyway, let's finish this one up. This is a good song. Could you love me in a bed? Could you love me on a bus? I like 21 questions. (laughs) And they all about us. This song reminds me, this ending part reminds me of the part off of the 2001 Chronic album. I'll mention it here after. Good sound. Good song. Good song. That, 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 that gets a heart. You know, and honestly... For anybody thinking, damn, Bob, you're bitching about this album. I, the last five songs have hearts. There's only two tracks that do not have hearts. So please don't think I'm being terribly critical. I'm just really trying to explain my experience with the album as I process through it. So this part, you know, would you love me in a Bentley? Could you love me on a bus? <laughs> Reminds me of towards the end of 2001, the Dre album. Uh whatever happened to fall in love with a guy with a bus pass just because you love the guy. (laughs) That whole rant interlude thing, it's so good. No, but I got to be the player. I got to be the pimp motherfucker. Tell the kid. Tell the kid you was a hoe. (laughs) You were weekend pussy. (laughs) That whole thing is so great. Love it. I always crack up when I hear that shit, man. Okay. All right. Let's get serious again. Don't push me. Track 15. It's featuring Lloyd Banks and Eminem, produced by Eminem. Cool. Here another track produced by Eminem. And here we go, track 15. I oh. need you to pray for me. I need you to care for me. I need you to want me to win. I need to know where I'm headed, because I know where I've been. Flows, bone crushing, it's nothing. I come up with something. Come yeah. through the strip front and stun it's something you won't see. Huh. 45 pounds, spinners, haters hate that I'm winning. Man, I've been hot from the beginning. Motherfuckers envy the kid. Control your jealousy. Nice head. I can't control my temper. I'm finna catch a felony. Pistol in hand, homie. I'm down to get it popping. Once I squeeze the first shot. No, I ain't stopping till my cup is empty. I'm simply not that nigga. You should try your luck with a fuck. Kind of neat how he's structuring his flow with the, that like synth sound. I ain't straight for your way, so don't push me. Fill your ass up with me, so don't push me. I got something for your ass. Keep thinking I'm pussy right now. Ass, so don't push me. I ain't straight for your way, so don't push me. Fill your ass up with me. So don't push me. I got something for your ass. Keep thinking I'm pushing. I'm running for nothing. My stomach is touching what I'm clutching to give you more than the concussion. End of discussion. My blood is colder, so I'm bolder. And it's soda. Hood on my shoulder. Look in the mirror. I see a sight. Huh. So don't push me. I ain't straight for your head. So don't push me. Let's go through this a little bit. There's something. There's some stuff that then lost my bigger, bigger, I'll say brother. And I didn't cry too young to understand the consequences of a man living a lie gotta get that money i'll be damned if i'm bummy gotta watch my background these guys because they're funny 20 years of watching my mama's tears got me heated heavily weeded that right there man i mean just fucking 20 years of heartbreak i don't know i don't like it when i have like a bad morning you know like i i can't even fucking imagine the mental state the exhaustion you get pulled into they don't want me balling. They want me buried, bogged in the dirt from shots flurried, laying with 
bugs under my shirt. What is he talking about here? Uh, the cops want to wear a wire. Oh, maybe. Huh. Maybe. Okay. Oh, oh where'd it go? I got plans to hop up in that Hummer because I'm a stunner. I sit back and wonder when them angels going to call my number. You know, under my chest is the heart of a lion. I ain't lying. Bounty hunter's got to be flying. Yeah. I was thinking this of like, take him home. You know, but I, I think they're taking, uh, yeah. Hmm. Okay. Okay. Interesting. All right, let's keep going. Keep going. Man, he's teeny bopper, see me on his magazine, covers in these beanies and these rags, living fantasies, fronting like it's all fun and games. Gonna <laughs> shoot him up, bang, and you see your brains hang, and you see we ain't playing, ain't saying we ain't laying down at night and ain't praying. I bully my way in this game, man, I'm done playing, man, I'm done saying that I'm done playing. I'm gonna start laying into these motherfucking cocksuckers. There's no way I'm gonna back down like a goddamn coward. I can't how what I look is a man bowing to his knees like the mad cow disease. Let somebody lash out at me and not lash huh. back out at him. Please, oh, whoa, yo, ho, hold up. Oh, no, not me, not Marshall. You wanna see Marshall? I'll show you Marshall. I try to show you art, but you just pick it apart. So I see I have to start showing you fucking old farts. A whole other side, I wanted to not show you so you know you're not. <laughs> yeah, this was this was solid too, man. It's just a great fucking sound. Another heart, six in a row. Ha! Huh. You know, another thing I think about too is I wonder what it was like in this time frame you know this is well after eminem had blown up because i remember him coming into the scene like 90 when was that it was like mid mid to late 90s something like that i remember that first like uh hi my name is music video and i think that was like late high school or something i think it was late 90s anyway i'm just trying to picture i'm just trying to remember the shift that hip hop was going through at this time. And so another thing to keep in mind as it kind of moved away from gangster rap, but you still got these lyrics like that. And hmm, interesting. I just kind of like, uh, you know, with Eminem's verse, I try to show you art, but you just pick it apart. So I see I have to start showing you fucking old farts. It's a whole other side. I didn't want to show you. <laughs> uh, I like that little part. That's good. Cool song, good sound. Again, man. The the there's just an an auditory strength that just flows through this album. And it's it's neat because clearly 50 Cent's voice is a big, big part of it. And kind of just his style. You know, I, I am settling into his flow a little bit more. Early on, I was thinking, oh, it's just a little slower. Okay, the the rhyming structure pretty straightforward okay whatever but now as i am a lot more used to just him i can feel myself really settling into the sound and there's just there's something about it man something about it it's hard to exactly nail down why but it and you know it's one of those things where it's almost unfair to some people right because some of these artists especially rappers and singers and stuff it's just that's what their voice sounds like and so that's why they're so great. <laughs> you know, there's not a whole lot you can do about that as a singer. Your voice sounds like what it sounds like. You, know, you can kind of, you can modify it a little bit, I'm sure. But if you just have a terrible sounding voice, sorry, sorry, you know, bad luck, bad draw. Anyway, okay. Track 16, Got to Make It to Heaven, from what I understand, is the conclusion of the original album. So the, the three after this are essentially add-ons for the streaming services. Uh, this one's produced by Megahertz. I'll consider this the closer and then the next three as additional songs. Here we go. Oh, yeah. Yeah, oh. huh? Yeah. Already sounds like a great closer. <laughs> I gotta make it to heaven. I'm going to hell. I'm paranoid, I stand careful, I choose my friends. I've been to ICU once, I ain't going again. I ain't going again. Roy got murked, then Roy got murked. 
And homie still in the hood, why he ain't getting hurt? I smell some fishy, man, it might get wrapped. Damn, niggas switch your sides on niggas just like that. You know me, I stay with a bitch on her knees and give guns away in the hood like a government cheese. Spray off the suitcase, <laughs> 1100 cc's. No plate on the back, straight squeezing the mac. I gotta make it to heaven, I gotta make it to heaven, I gotta make it to heaven. This is kind of kind of good. I gotta make it to heaven, I hope I'm Bit of a mantra to feel to it. I don't stop the rap, the niggas. You yeah. posting up the smack, you didn't clap, you nigga. Pop try to front, so I wave the chrome of his ass. Point blank range, I spat through a bone of his ass. Two weeks later, niggas came through a match to lay me down. They sprayed, I played dead and got the fuck off the ground. Let's go through this a bit. I mean, I, is this. Is this like a kind of a true story here? You know, when I come through the hood, I don't stop to rap. Get close up, smack it, clap. Uh, you know, point range. I spazzed, pulled a bone on his ass. Pop tried to fight, so I waved the chrome. Spazzed, pulled the bone. Two weeks later, people came through with Max to lay me down, sprayed. I played dead, got the fuck off the ground. Out the blue, I got a phone call. 50s, what up? They sent a bitch at me. I sent the bitch back, cut up. I don't play that pussy shit. I done told you, front of me. You're going to meet one of my soldiers. What's this about here? All over 2003, 50s, you send me lines on some of the songs. Sure, great. Okay, so the annotation doesn't really say anything on if this is a true story or not. Oh, that's verse one. Uh, let's see here. Cousin twin shot up his mama crib. Now he's in jail. Tripping off flicks of blue grain. Chill up, was he in black too? Pop mama moved, so, but she don't talk to him no more. The shells from twins 4-4 four, four blew the hinge off the door. So this guy was fucking tripping out on drugs? I started shooting inside the house. Is that true? Now his cousin twin is in jail. He has no access to women. Yeah, sure. Okay. These annotations are not very helpful in terms of explaining if this is a true story, what actually happened, etc. Without that check every month, how's she gonna pay for the crib? Social service finna come and take the kids. Huh. Wild. Fucking wild. This was interesting. This stuck out to me. In the hood. They identify people by their cars, so I switch up whips to stay off the radar, which makes sense, but I, I mean, I've never even considered the idea of, yeah, that's his car, that's their car, like, oh, yeah, and of course, if you're in the hood, you probably don't have enough money to own multiple cars, right? <laughs> so that's kind of wild, too. You can't even, like, drive around, because people know what you drive, and if they're looking for you, oh, shit, here we go. Huh. All right, let's finish this up. I, you know... I gotta make it to heaven for going through hell. Gotta make it to heaven. This feels like a mantra. Just the way he's doing it. Good sound to it. All right, let's let's keep going. Let's keep. That's the prayer they burn in your head when you in case at. Man, I might talk to you while we up in them pins, but when we come home, that don't mean we gon' fucking be friends. The shells past your head, close enough to hear him whistle. Thank God they missed you and go grab your pistol. In the hood, niggas running around acting crazy, buying little weird jokes for maybe babies. See, it might be maybe his, babies. And it might be yours. Holy the shit! The the projects are straight up hard. Man, it don't take much for you to get in them draws. I gotta make it to heaven. I hope I make it to heaven. Definitely a strong closer for the album. Definitely a strong closer. I especially like, too, the idea of kind of wrapping things up thematically. You know, it starts out him being shot and all that shit, and then kind of go through the album, all these different things, but wrapping it up with the idea of kind of make it to heaven for going through hell. Yeah. Strong closer. Very strong closer. So just right here, I, there's three more tracks, but just right here for the, the original album, there's only two songs that don't have hearts, Heat and Bloodhound. Those are the only two songs I don't have hearts next to. So that lets you know <laughs> the level of enjoyment I've had for Get Rich or Die Trying. Pretty fucking good. Pretty fucking good. And like I said earlier, additional listens will be interesting. Let's see if I can kind of break away from it, detach from the lyrics. But since I'm not really into the lyrics, and that's okay because the, the strong suit of this album for me by far is just the overall sound. The overall sound is fucking amazing. And I can see, you you know, how many of you were back in the day in the car, throw the CD in, turn that shit up and just let it fucking play, you know? Because that's what it's all about. That's what it's all about. All right, let's move into some bonus tracks. Wankster's 
50 cents first single after being discovered by Eminem. Okay, cool. Track 17 off the hits and unreleased. Well, anyway, this is track 17 off of one of the versions of Get Richard I Try. And here we go. Wankster. Produced by Jay Praise. Like a really beefy synth sound, huh? Break it down. I got a lot of living to do before I die. And I ain't got time to waste. Let's make it. You say you a gangster, but you never pop me. Ha, huh, this sounds weird. Different. You need to stop from you ain't a friend of mine. You ain't no kin of mine. What makes you think that I won't run up on you with the nine? We do this all the time. Right now we on the grind. So hurry up and cop and go with selling nicks and down. Uh-huh. Show that she's so fine. I gotta make her mine. The vocal sound of his voice is different. It's like it's recorded different. <laughs> You've been hustling a long time and you ain't got nothing. Trippy high sound there. Yeah, really high there. <laughs> so I just hit the annotation. The word wankster is a mix of wannabe and gangster. Okay. Okay, also known as window shopper. Oh, <laughs> this particular breed of person talks a lot of shit, but doesn't walk the walk. But you never got none. You've been hustling a long time and you ain't got nothing. <laughs> Damn, homie. I do like the line of you've been hustling for a long time and you ain't got nothing. <laughs> I don't know if I give that a heart. I think what's throwing me off is this feels like like an early recording. You know, like this feels pre Get Rich or Die Trying, which let's scroll up and see if that's actually true. I didn't read the full summary. 50's first single after being discovered started as a mixtape track. Okay, so this is, yeah, I find it as a bonus cut. Okay. Although it's believed the track is aimed at Ja Rule specifically, 50 said it's a diss toward any fake gangster. And then he added that Ja fits the bill. <laughs> oh, man. It is funny. It is funny how much uh, how much uh, of this is pointed at Ja Rule. <laughs> okay, track 18 is called You Not Like Me, produced by Red Spider. Here we go, track 18. NYPD, LAPD, NYPD. When it's on, that's who you get, huh? NYPD, LAPD. When it's on, that's NYPD, who you get. That's your motherfucking click, huh? NYPD, uh-huh. LAPD, NYPD. You a motherfucking snitch, huh? NYPD, LAPD, NYPD. Niggas wanna shine like me, me. Rhyme like me, me. They don't walk huh. around with a nine like me, me. <laughs> They don't want to do like these echoed me like is cool. And they ain't strong enough to take nine like me. Yo, you thinking about shitting on 50? Save it. My songs belong in the Bible with King David's. I teach uh, niggas sign language. That's that's it ain't deaf, son. You heard that? That mean ask around. I ain't the one you want to stun on, pa. Pull through. I throw a fucking cocktail at your car. From the last shootout, I got a dimple on my face. It's nothing. I can go after Mace fan base. Shell hit my Joe. I ain't wait for Doc to get it out. Hit my wisdom too. Fuck. 
spit it out. I don't smell the light. <laughs> ain't pretty. Got a purple heart for Warren. I ain't never left the city. Hoes be like Fitty. You so witty. On a dick like they heard I go straight for P. Diddy. You got fat while we start. Huh? It's my turn. I don't fail how the shells burn. I still won't uh, learn. Won't learn. If you can shine me. I like this one. This is great. Like me. You ain't done the work on the block. You not like me. It's hot and you ain't got no drop. You not like me. Hold me down, nigga. OG's trying to rock me. Uh -huh. yeah. D's waiting for my response to lock me. Yeah. This is cool my beat. Hustle, I kind of like, I like this one. Need some shit with a banana clip to try and stop me. I'm the one. If you can shine, run to the cops. You not like me. You ain't got no work on the block. You not like me. It's hot. You know, and it, it's, this is kind of nice because... You know, you guys have heard me kind of through the album going, eh, I'm not into lyrics, and it was kind of maybe even starting to detract, but I don't know why this one works well for me. This one really clicks, though. Really clicks. And I think, honestly, sometimes I just need this little bit, right? Mama said everything that happened to us was part of, part of God's plan, so at night when I talked to him, I got my gun in my hand. Don't think I'm crazy because I don't fear man, because I fear when I kill a man, God won't understand. Got a head full of evil thoughts. Am I Satan? Kind of killed these people. I'm still waiting. Sometimes I. Sometimes that's all I need. Just this little, little drop of humanity, I suppose. Well, actually, maybe maybe that's not accurate because unfortunately, a big part of humanity is killing each other. That just keeps happening over and over and over again. But I guess maybe what I'm trying to say is being bothered by that sometimes i just need that little bit the beat too the beat has got this just great strong structure to it very very clean straightforward his voice his vocals sound richer again unlike the previous track where it just sounded like a little like he's a little bit further from the mic you know a little bit more space in the booth maybe i don't know i don't know but the vocals sounded different on on wangster but you lot you not like me i'm I'm enjoying this one. And that fucking first verse was hilarious. <laughs> Spit the tooth out. Hose on the dick like they heard it goes right for P. Diddy. Like, this is some, there's some good, good fucking lines in here. Really good. Grown ass man when started kid shines. No little pieces with the little stones. Got little clientele fees for your cell phone. When the gossip is started, I'm always the topic. You too old for that shit, dog. Won't you stop it? Shorty, I've been watching you, watching me. Now you tell me what you like more, my watching me. <laughs> if you get shot and run to the cops, you're not like me. You ain't got no work on the block. Yeah, you're good not song. Like me. It's good you ain't got song. no drop, you're not like me. Like me, dope, you're not like me. If you get shot and run to the cops, you're not like me. You ain't got no work on the block, you're not like me. It's hot and you ain't got no drop, you're not like me. Like me, dope, you're not like me. Uh -uh, uh -uh. Not like me. It's neat how sometimes it's really just kind of basic, simple beat structures just work so well. So well. That low guitar way off in the background going nuts mode. That's cool. <laughs> All right, this is the final track. For the album I'm listening to, in terms of the additions, there's multiple to choose from, from Spotify. Your Life's on the Line, Life's on the Line, uh, produced by Terrence Dudley. Originally from the mixtape Power of the Dollar, and later added to Rich, Get Rich, Die Trying. Uh, let's see. Actually, I'm going to read the summary here. One of the first and most devastating darts thrown in the long feud between 50 Cent and Ja Rule. <laughs> well... I'm already excited. Here we go. All right, here we go. Final track, Life's on the Line. Nobody likes me. Oh, trippy. Nobody likes me, but that's okay, because I don't like y'all anyway. Huh. And I don't like y'all anyway. Fuck all y'all. I got yeah, my watch talk for me, my whip talk for me, my gat talk for me. Bad what up, homie? Even bitches who don't know me. They wanna blow me for this shit I lost with me saying a lot for me. I came in the rap humble. I don't give a fuck now. I serve anybody like niggas who hustle up. Uh -huh, Damn, uh -huh. coke price go up. Caps will come down. The D's running my grip. I know where to be found. Niggas who hustle for me, they don't even stash tracks. They keep them on them. Right there in their ass crack. But I don't like a nigga. Don't pretend to have the paramedics rap in your fucking head like a Hindu look. Murder. 
This has got to be the Ja Rule part right here. Let me click this annotation. This is part of the song was directed to Ja Rule and the Murder Inc. label. This and other lines in the song make fun of the label's posturing. Their signature cry was, it's murder, it's murder, or, I don't know, and remind us of Ja Rule was really Jeffrey Atkins. <laughs> uh, you know, it's interesting. I'm kind of glad I'm doing these last couple additional songs because Wankster and this one, different, different. And it's weird because I, I feel a little vindicated. I was saying earlier how it, you know, this album feels a little bit more commercial and stuff. This is more hardcore. And so I wonder if they told him, look, look, just back off of that a little bit. Keep it, keep it in there, but just, just back off of it a little bit and it'll be more mainstream and more accepted and all this other shit. Cause this one's a lot more like hardcore gangster rap in terms of, well, from what I understand, but <laughs> the fucking uh, shit, man. What's interesting to me too is I like these lyrics a little bit more. There's a little bit more there, you know? I'm the guy that sold coke, that sold dope, that shot dice, went broke, then sold soap. Pop shit. A thug that pop clips. Went from three and a half to a whole break. And not that it that in itself is like, oh my God, mind-blowing lyrics, right? But at least there's just, a, it feels like there's just a little bit more there because he's talking about him and what he did. You know, this line too. When I don't like a person, I don't pretend to. I'll have the... All the paramedics wrapping your fucking head like a Hindu. Pretty good little line there. I came in the rap humble. I don't give a fuck now. So if anybody, like people who hustle uptown, you know. So I don't know. It, it's interesting. It's kind of interesting hearing this earlier in the career song. After hearing the whole album. Anyway, okay, let's finish this one up. Niggas don't want no parts of me. I'm trying to figure out how y'all started me. You gonna make me catch you on a late night. Catch you on a late night. And his vocals are different. I don't believe you. Get out of line, I get you hit up. Now if you say my name in your rhyme, you better watch what you say. You can carry the way, you can get cool. I like the production shift right there, that was cool. Jesus, man. Cool song. I like the beat. Yeah, this gets a heart too. Fucking <laughs> 19 songs, 16 hearts. And really, I probably could have gave Wanks a heart, but we'll see. Although, actually, that's not entirely accurate because the intro is a track. Anyway, 18 songs, 15 hearts. Huh. Huh. Well. Fun experience. Really fun experience. I hope you guys, you know, I, I, when I read comments, I can tell there's a lot of people who are leaving comments as they're watching. You know, I can tell because they'll like, they'll say something like, oh, actually you just said that. And then they'll, they'll like reply to their own comment with something else. So it's pretty common, I think, for people who do comment to comment as they watch, listen, my reaction. And I hope you guys stuck with it. I hope you guys who are like, oh shit, Bob's being too critical. Bob's, you know, he's not getting it. I hope you guys were able to kind of just let it play out and, and just watch me work through this, you know? Because this was different. This was a different experience for me in terms of appreciating this because love the sound. Love the energy. It's just fucking great to listen to. 
But lyrically, I, I was losing interest lyrically. But it, the lyrics are such a small portion of what makes this album so great. And then eventually, too, I kind of got over that once I figured out the little hangups I, I, I had. Because, you know, sometimes you'll listen to something and you'll go, I don't, you know, this ain't working for me. But you don't know why, you know? Isn't that, isn't that kind of wild how with music, especially the first time, you'll hear something and you'll love it or you'll hate it. And then sometimes you're like, no, this is, this is kind of cool. Why? Uh, I don't know. I, I mean, I, you, know, you just can't quite put a finger on it, you know? And so that I was going through that. I was going through that a bit with, with the lyrics because I, there's just so much, there, are, there is some content that exists in hip hop that I don't, I don't care. I don't care. And, and I, you know, it's kind of like this agreed upon thing where you say certain things to let people know you're a badass and you say certain things to, to brag about how you get all the women and you say certain things to talk about how you've got all this money. Okay, great. But I don't fucking care. Like none of those things are terribly interesting to me. You know, I'm more interested in the internals. What's, what's happening inside the soul of a person type of a thing. And, you know, a lot of that shit is like super serious. And there's plenty of people out there who don't want to hear that. And I, I get that. Like I said, it, at one point, I'm in the minority in terms of my opinion on how I listen to music and really, really trying to get into the nuts and bolts of things. Because to me, what's interesting is what makes a person like this tick? You know, what what little things are going on inside the external is easy to see and the external is pretty under you know easy to understand and process like yeah you got all this money and you got women you got great great is there anything else to you you know that's what's interesting to me that's what makes me curious about an artist and then sometimes i learn more about an artist and i go ooh wish i wouldn't have known that <laughs> <You know? laughs> ooh should have just stuck. I should have just stuck with the music. I should have just let them be who they are. There's a whole fucking like in this album. There's whole beef with Ja Rule, man. Like already kind of fascinating to me. Like I wonder what set Fifty off so much about him. Maybe he just hates the fact that Ja Rule's saying all these things. I don't know anything about Ja Rule or what he says in his music, but maybe he just it drove him nuts that he'd be saying all these things when he's clearly not any of those things. Hmm. I mean, overall. Get Richard Dyke, this is fucking phenomenal sound. Phenomenal sound. <clears throat> it, it is kind of interesting how you know, listening to this and listening specifically to 50 and how he raps and his style of rapping, specifically the rapping, I'm not surprised I never see his name really come up when people start talking about the best rappers. It's cool to see him show so much love and respect to Biggie, Pac, Nas, Jay-Z. You know, it's cool to see who he looks up to. But in terms of rapping, yeah, he's not really necessarily the best rapper when it comes to that technical, specific ability. You know, he's certainly not the fastest. He's not the most complex. But what's cool is he sounds great. And, and that's fun for me, too, because... It gets away from this opinion of what you must do to be a great. Now, I'm sure people will still argue to be a great rapper, you just have to hit on these categories, but not to make great music or to have wildly successful albums and songs and et cetera. So it's kind of neat to just see again, you know, I, I think about, uh, you know, some of the video games that you play, right, where you're going to build your character and you have to like determine their strengths and weaknesses and to make this stronger, it makes the other thing weaker. And it's fun how I can, you can kind of picture different artists and different, different uh, builds, I suppose. So with, with 50, man, it's just, it's incredible how much the strength and the confidence and the sound of vocals fucking matters. It just, it, I really do feel like it's kind of the heart and soul of pretty much any hip hop song. If your vocals don't have strength, confidence, power, sound, it's flat. And as soon as the vocals go flat, it doesn't fucking matter anything else that's happening. It doesn't matter. The production can't carry flat vocals. Strong vocals can carry 
any kind of production. Not that the production on this needed to be carried, but I'm just really focusing on vocal performance because that's what 50 brings. It's just those fucking vocals. It reminds me a lot of Tupac. Not to say he sounds like Tupac or you know he's trying to copy Tupac, but he he's just got that energy in his voice. The fucking power, strength, confidence, man. It's cool. Very cool. Huh. Give it a shot. I fucking finally sat down with it. <laughs> Do I have a favorite? Many men's cool. In the club. Fuck oh, God. What an amazing, amazing song. <laughs> Pimp was good, even though at that point I was kind of like, well, I'm kind of tired of all this, this gangster shit, but... Poor Little Rich, I remember being impressed with 21 Questions was cool. I mean, fuck, I got a lot of hearts. A lot of hearts. You Not Like Me was cool. A lot of hearts. Huh. God, man, this must have just hit the industry with so much, like a, like a fucking storm, like storm surge coming onto the shirt. 50 Cent, blowing up, debut album. I mean, goddamn. Kind of wish I would have been there, you know? And I was, I was there, but... Even if I was into the scene, I don't know how much I would have been able to enjoy it just because being deployed, all of a sudden you're gone, you know? You live on a metal island in the middle of the ocean. Okay, two and a half hours, nice. I still have seven music videos to get through. If you're watching on YouTube, this is the end. This is the end. <clears throat> huh.